There you go, man. Now you can eat meat on Fridays without going to hell. Thank you, sir. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We last left off finishing up Lost City, and now we're going to go back to Draenor to jump right into Fairy Tale Part 1. Start the quest, purchase any teleport card for the Chronicle if you want, and then we're going to continue Fairy Tale up until the point of needing to speak to Malignius Mortifer, as he'll assign us three random items from a list that we'll need to take to the Nature Spirit in the Mortmire Swamp. Fortunately, the items he gives us are Mortmire Pear, Mortmire Stem, and Whiteberries. And if you recall, I anticipated this early on, so I already got the Pear and Stem when we did the Mortmire Swamp steps. And luckily, white berries are very easy to get. We just have to go to the Lava Dragon Isle in the wilderness. And because there are Lava Dragons there, we're going to go to Lumbridge Castle first to pick up the Anti-Dragon Fire Shield from Duke Horatio. And then we'll go to Edgeville, take the Wilderness Lever, and go to the Lava Dragon Isle. When at Edgeville Bank, we're going to pull out our Anti-Dragon Fire Shield, Boots of Lightness, and a Slash Weapon. I'm choosing to bring the Excalibur because we can wield it and it gives us 8 defense levels. Also, we'll want our looting bag if you have it to double the amount of white berries we can pick up, and some cakes and wines. I'm also choosing to bring a couple energy potions and my lumber ring, just in case we need to run from something. Once we're at Lava Dragon Isle, we're going to go through the gate, all the way south to the white berry spawns. There are two, one on the east and one on the west, however the eastern one is much safer as the dragons cannot hit you. Fill your inventory with as many white berries as you want, either world hopping or waiting for the relatively quick spawns in between. I'm choosing to fill up both my looting bag and inventory, as we might need one for Morning Sun Part 2, we'll need one for Hand in the Sand, and eventually once we get the Herblore level for it, we can make super defense potions, so might as well get as many as we can now. Then I'm going to go run all the way northwest to the Mage Arena, and since I've got the money, I'm going to buy about 20 or so more Cosmic Runes, world hopping in between. Then I'm going to pull out everything we need to continue the Fairy Tale quest, and take the minigame teleport to Shades of Morton, before running through the swamp back to the Nature Spirit to get the Magic Secateurs. Now let's go back to the bank in Cenaris to prepare to fight the Tanglefoot boss and finish the quest. Grab everything you need for the boss fight. Note that I made some rings of recoil out of the cosmics I just got, but since we'll be flinching the boss at the end of its leash range, we're not going to take that much damage. But we'll still need food, and the more wines you bring, the more attack potions you'll need to bring to compensate. Now let's go kill the boss, get the Queen's Secateurs, and turn in the quest. Rewarding us with the Magic Secateurs, which gives us a 10% boost to harvesting when wielded, as well as 3500 farming experience, bumping us far past the level 13 that we needed to plant Jute Seeds for the Kandaran Easy Diary, and 2000 attack and 1000 magic experience. Now we're going to go to Draenor to immediately start Fairy Tail Part 2, which will continue up until the point we get access to the Fairy Rings, and then take the sequences of Fairy Rings to talk to the Queen, so that when we come back with level 40 Thieving, we can continue the quest. And now with access to fairy rings, we can get to a lot of places a lot more quickly. Speaking of which, we're going to do that right now. Head back to the fairy ring we came in on and take it to CJR, which is northwest of the Sinclair Mansion. Then we're going to run south to Sears Bank to prepare for a couple diary tasks, as well as to continue Holy Grail. Pull out the farm gear, bucket of compost, and five jute seeds we purchased previously. Then go northwest to the hops patch and plant the jute seeds for a Kendar and Easy diary task. Then go southwest to Sir Galahad's house to ask him for a cup of tea, satisfying another diary task, and to continue Holy Grail. When getting to the point where we have to kill the Black Knight Titan, we can flinch him in the same manner that we flinched the previous bosses. Killing the Black Knight Titan opens up access to the Fairy Ring in the Fisher Realm, BJR, so next time we have to leave the island and come back, we can just do it via the Fairy Ring system to save some time. Finishing the quest gives us a stunning 11,000 prayer experience and 15,300 defense experience, bumping us up to level 34 prayer and level 33 defense. Now let's go southeast to Catherby, pull out our fishbowl and coins, go east to the fishing shop to get a pet fish, satisfying the last Kendar and Easy Diary task, go back northwest to the wedge to get our rewards, putting the lamp into Herblore, bumping us up to level 35. Then I decide to do my clue scroll, but the rewards aren't great. Now, because Dragon Slayer requires 2k coins, and the Fremnik Trials will eventually require 5k coins, I decided to do another inventory of ham storerooms to get around 14k. And I decided I'm going to need a little bit better food to fight the dragon during Dragon Slayer, and conveniently, Tribal Totem rewards 5 cooked swordfish for completing it. It's super short, and it also gives 1775 thieving experience, and it's in a food shop where we can buy more cooked swordfish and lobsters. So let's pull out our Arctic Cape and coins. Take the cape to the monastery, run to the boat, take it to Brimhaven, and then go to the food store to purchase a few cooked swordfish before doing tribal totem from start to finish, gaining five more cooked swordfish as well as 1775 thieving experience. Now before leaving the food store, we're going to purchase a few more swordfish, and if you like, lobsters as well. Now let's home teleport to Lumbridge and prepare to get the map pieces for Dragon Slayer. 
Let's grab out our mage gear as well as some melee weapons. The maze key, teleports to house, Folidor, and runes for Telekin to grab, and some food. We're going to home teleport, which takes us to Remington. Note that you can change whether you want to teleport inside or outside of your house, depending on what activity you're doing. Then we're going to go northwest to Melzar's maze, go through the whole thing, get the map piece, go east to Port Serum, slap Wormbrain's bitch ass until he grab the map piece, then north to the fishing shop to purchase a lobster pot for the next part of the quest. And then now we need to teleport to Folidor to prepare to get the third and final map piece. But first, the next part of the quest requires 90 steel nails, and since I haven't yet smithed Blurite limbs on Dork's Anvil, I'm going to loop that in as well. So pull out 12 coal, 6 iron, and 1 Blurite, go to the furnace to make the bars, and then come back to the bank to prepare for the next part. The next part being to pull out everything we need to both get the final map piece, as well as repair the boat, and to smith the Blurite limb. So we're going to go north out of town, smith the limbs on an anvil, satisfying an easy diary task, and then smithing 90 nails before running east to Barbarian Village to craft the soft clay into an unfired bull. Before continuing on to get the final map piece, we are then going to minigame teleport to Pest Control now that we have at least level 40 combat. Then we're going to take the boat to Port Serum, talk to Clarence who's right next to us, give him the 2k for the boat, repair the boat, go to Draenor and give Ned the map, and now we're going to kill a damn dragon! Since we'll eventually need level 37 range for Spirits of the Elid, I'm choosing to use range to fight the boss. And I'm going to bring the swordfish we got, as well as some wines and rings of recoil that I made earlier. Now we're going to take the boat to Crandor and climb up the top of the mountain. Once you go into the mountain and watch the cutscene, pop back up to satisfy a medium Karamja diary task. And then once you go back in, run south past the boss and through the secret door to satisfy another medium diary task. Plus, you can now take it both ways. And then now we're going to fight the boss, slay the beast, and home teleport to Lumbridge make our way back to Edgeville, and turn in the quest. We're rewarded with 18.65k strength and defense experience, bumping us up to level 45 strength and level 40 defense, which is convenient because Dragon Slayer also allows us to wear green dragon hide and rune plate bodies. While we're discussing that, we should also discuss new armor cost. So now that the Champions Guild shops are open, we can purchase a rune plate legs and rune chain body for 64k and 50k respectively, or for 5% cheaper each at a shop in Narda in the desert, which we'll be at in a bit. We can also purchase a rune plate body from Oziak for 84.5k, or an adamant plate body from the Champions Guild for 21.6k. The rune plate body gives low 80s defensive stats versus the adamant plate body 60 defensive stats. So that's four times the cost for a 25% boost. I don't think it's worth it right now. So I think our best course of action would be to go for the Addy Plate and Rune Legs, which in total is 82.4k GP. Since an inventory of hand storerooms is around 15k GP, depending on what items we keep versus sell, we'll do 7 or 8 inventories of those at some point to get the armor. Less so if we choose not to keep anything. It'll probably take a couple hours of grinding. But I think if we focus on doing some desert stuff up next, mainly the tourist trap and the feud for 20k thieving experience, we can come back and do ham storerooms at a higher thieving level to grind it out faster. But before we run a circuit of the desert, we need to run a circuit around Varrock. We'll be doing the Ichthar Ichthar we'll be doing Ikalik's little helper quest, and the wiki recommends having 35 agility to jump over the pit in the pyramid. And since we're under 1200 experience away, we're just going to run a few laps around Varrock to get that before going to the desert. Boom, level 35. That didn't take too long at all. Now we need to minigame teleport to Clan Wars before running south to the Shantae Pass, making sure we have everything we need for the Tourist Trap quest, which can be bought from Shantae himself. We'll also need a full set of desert robes. Along with that, for some diary tasks, we'll need a knife, anti-poison, rope, and drawman staff. Now we're going to go south through the pass, which does satisfy as an easy diary task, and then talk to Irina to start the Tourist Trap. Now we're going to go south to the desert mining camp to continue the tourist trap quest, but on the way you should see various Caridian cactuses. Use your knife on those or just left click to cut them to try and refill your water skin. When it's successful, you'll satisfy an easy diary task. Now we're going to go into the desert mining camp to continue the quest up until the point that the weirdo wants the pineapple. So we'll take our Ardy cape to the monastery, take the fairy ring to BIQ which takes us to the Calphite Hive, we're going to go northwest into the Calphite Hive, satisfying a easy desert diary task. Then we're going to run all the way through until we find the Calphite Soldier Room and Potato Cactuses. We're going to pick up one Potato Cactus, run back out the tunnel towards safety, and we're going to drop it five times to satisfy yet another desert easy diary task. Now we need to continue on with the quest up until the point of completion. We'll receive two choices for 4.65k experience amongst agility, fletching, smithing, or thieving. 
We'll use the first one on fledging, bumping us up to around level 24, and we'll use the rest of the iron arrow tips and iron dart tips we have to turn those into arrows and darts, and then we'll fletch oak longbows until we get level 30 for zoker flesh eaters, and we'll use the other one on thieving, bumping us up to level 37, the requirements for spirits of the Elid. Now we're going to go back through the Chante Pass to Bank to prepare for the feud quest, as well as a couple more desert diaries. Along with our range gear and everything we need for the feud quest, we're going to bring some coins for the magic carpet, and then any grimy herb. Now we're going to go back through the Chante Pass, take the magic carpet to Pondovnich, which satisfies another Desert Easy Diary task. And then because all but the start and end of the feud quest are contained within this town, we're going to continue it up until completion now. But before turning it in back to Ali Morrisane and Al Karid, we're going to instead take the magic carpet south to Narda to do another quest and a few more diary tasks. And I think we're going to call it there. Thanks again for watching everybody. Next time we'll start off by doing the first part of Spirits of the Elid, doing a couple more diary tasks, doing Ikalik's Little Helper, finishing the Desert Easy Diary, and finally getting a buttload of thieving experience. See you next time.